now that we know what superset is, its capabilities and features, let's talk about how you can pull this down to your local machine so that you can make the much needed configuration changes and customizations for potential clients. So the next thing we need to do is pull this down to our local machine so we can actually configure it and make it work for us. So a few ways to do it. We're going to go the simple route. Although if you're pretty familiar with Git, you could clone it down and then push it to some other repository. You could also use like Git Bucket or GitLab if that's what you're using. For us, we're just going to come up here and search for superset and we're going to come to the Apache superset. And then we're going to just click this fork button here and I'm going to select myself and we're going to call this superset because that's fine. Now, but the default option here is to copy the master branch only. You could you could get away with doing it, but I just find that the master branch has like so many bugs and errors. It's it makes it really hard to use it like at all. Like if you pull it down, it, it's got the newest and greatest thing. Don't get me wrong, but just doing like a simple Docker compose up half the time the init um, container doesn't actually finish and then none of the data gets put in sometimes it'll crash even before it's able to get permission so you can't even log in to the app so webpack will complete but nothing else will so i would suggest unselecting this you're going to get tons and tons of feature branches apache does a really poor job of actually cleaning any of this up so you're going to get like hundreds of thousands of different branches that's okay we can clean that up later in our repo but for now let's just make sure that we select all of the the branches and tags so that we can use something that's actually production ready versus this master one that just has a bunch of trash in it um we're going to click click create fork and now we're going to have our fork and it's going to be in our repo and it's going to be based off the apache superset and then to pull it down to our local machine we're just going to click copy here and then we're going to do a git clone paste that in it's going to clone our superset instance for those of you that may want to do like a private repo i can do an a, a do a separate video on that or i can provide some documentation the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cd into our uh, uh repo here as you see we have all of that when you fork something um, we we have this this branch here what we're going to do is we're going to come over to settings and then we're going to go down to branches and I'm going to change this because I don't like this branch and we're going to update this to the 2.0 and we're just going to click update for now. I understand it's not the default branch. That's totally fine. Now when we come over here, we're going to do a get checkout. We're going to do version that is not correct. So now that you're in here, you can start modifying things and, and getting set up. So, um, if I do an ls on here, you'll see that it has all the files and folders and things that we're going to need. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up Docker. We're going to make sure that's configured uh, appropriately and it has the, the resources allocated to it that it needs. And then we're going to make some small changes in the Docker file so that we're getting the, the latest and greatest um, that Apache says is approved for production. And then uh, we'll set it up and then get a working copy on our local machine that we can play with and then we can start customizing it adding features adding databases and things like that so we're gonna you, if you haven't already go ahead and download and install docker desktop it's super easy just google docker desktop download the version for your machine i'm off running on a mac so i i obviously did mac skip the tutorial what we want to do is come in into settings and within here we want to click on resources and in resources you want to make sure you have at least eight gigs I would suggest doing a little bit more if you can, if, if you're strapped on resources, uh, you know, if you have, you, you really need at least 16 gigs of RAM on your machine and, and hopefully you can allocate half of that to Docker. I found that 12 gigs kind of just works. Um, now on your production server, when you get to pushing this into Kubernetes, you, it's never going to run that much unless you have a lot of users running it. But when you're doing development things, it, t it tends to use a little bit more memory and it could just be that I'm on a Mac and it just requires more memory but 
just one thing I've noticed is you need at least eight. If you can do more, please do it. The next thing we're gonna, we are gonna use Kubernetes to make sure that we can test locally before we push it up to GCP. So make sure that's enabled. You're gonna click apply and restart. You click install. This is gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna step away and come back and, uh, and we'll continue from there. All right, so now we have our Docker desktop running. We have everything configured that we need to. The next thing we need to do is we're gonna open up the repo into our code editor. Please use the code editor of your choice. It doesn't really matter what you use. You just need to be able to edit some documents. At the end of the day, that's all code is, is, is just documents. And we're going to edit the Docker Compose file. <clears throat> now, this has it 2.0.0. We're going to make this one, and then we're going to do dash uh, dot one dash dev. Now, this might seem like this is going to be a development uh, image, but I can assure you that it's not. I, I spoke to some people at Apache um, and they said it's the same image they would use in production, but it does have some additional features, but you're not going to compromise security or anything like that. If you push this to production, you're just going to get some additional features, which we kind of want. So we're going to save this. <clears throat> Now, for those who are super conscientious about make sure that you're on like a, a tested build that's not going to break or whatever, I think the version you want is like uh, 1.7. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. You can go over to uh, the GitHub repository here and you click on releases and it should tell you exactly um, if you click down here. Um, disregard this. So it's, it's 1.5.3 would be like the tested approved build that you can use and there's not going to be any issues uh, version 2 could potentially have some issues but nothing that's going to be too crazy and for this tutorial i want to kind of use the newest features because that's what's going to be coming out and want to make this video um, as future proof as possible so we're going to go with version 2 we're going to go with the dev because it has some additional features so once you save that it's pretty simple we're going to do a docker compose up super simple command so i got to do once you click that it is going to now pull down any images build the ones that need to be built all this instruction is in the compose file so it's you know it's going to tell you it's going to tell docker how to build the how to build the um where is the uh, WebSocket. I think WebSocket's up here. It's like a Docker file right here. Yeah, this is going to tell it how to build this. We're not going to be using WebSocket. I haven't found it very useful. I think it's it probably will be deprecated sometime in the future. Although with WebSocket, you could build some type of custom API and, and do some fancy stuff if you needed to do that. Uh, but for like caching or, you know, running additional uh, nodes, if you will, to go fetch data and bring it back, we can all do that in Celery. So we don't need the WebSocket. This was, this was what we needed to use before version, I think 1.3 or something like that. Um, but now we don't, we don't need to, deal with that so it doesn't really matter and so we're gonna wait for this to build it this could take a little bit of time you're gonna see some errors we're gonna fix all of that the main thing that you're gonna look for to know when this is gonna complete because it's gonna take a lot of time is you want webpack to complete so you should see something that says webpack 100% the other thing is you're gonna see superset and knit say 4 4 completed this is just gonna have like everything from every container and the logs jumbled up into your console so i would suggest going over here to the desktop panel if you will inside containers you should see like all of the containers running the two that you're going to look for is one you're going to look for a knit a knit is building shit right now excuse my language this is on step one of four so once four of four gets completed then a knit's going to it's going to die so it's going to close itself out and you'll be good the next thing you're going to look for is superset node this one can take a lot of time um, for whatever reason sometimes webpack gets hung and it might be 30 minutes and then it kicks off and it starts building and other times it's like five minutes and it starts building but once it's built typically when you make changes within the ui if you need to do that the build times are really really quick so but the first time is going to take a little bit of time. If for whatever reason you come back in 35 minutes after you've walked the dog, uh, checked in with the girlfriend, did an errand, ate lunch, whatever, 
and it's still hung up and it's, it's not really running one analyze how much resources you have if you only have eight gigs of ram you got a pretty slow processor it could take a couple hours if you're on a pretty beast machine um if you're you know like i'm on a m1 uh pro max whatever it is then it shouldn't really take that long and if it does there's a little trick you can do and i'll show you how to do this so building the assets on the local machine before you do the docker build for whatever reason kind of speeds things up so i'm going to do that now or show you how to do it. i'm not going to do it but you would cd into the superset front end here and then you're going to do an npm install for those of you who are not familiar with like um web web development or using node.js uh, node package manager is just a package manager and it has all the dependencies so when you do this install it goes to that package.json file and it'll say okay what do i need what does this application depend on and it'll go ahead and download and install all of the dependencies and i find ironically for some reason that if you do this npm install when you go to do docker compose up webpack magically just starts working and it's really really quick and the time to to build anything is really really quick so if you run into that do this little thing and then do docker compose up so if, if it freezes do con command c i think it is uh, if you're on windows it should be control c that will like cancel whatever command is running and then you'll do a docker compose down like that that will tell you on all the containers and then you're going to go into the superset front end folder build or install the dependencies come back to the root folder and do docker compose up and it should be a lot quicker not everyone needs to do this but if if it happens to you where it freezes or webpack just gets stuck try that and see if it works if it doesn't uh, feel free to ping me or comment in the in the section below and i'll try to work through whatever issues you're having there's also a slack channel that i suggest everyone join uh, from apache you can ask your questions there and if i see them i'll definitely respond to you and try to help you out i'm going to wait for this to uh complete we still so our database is good but i don't see webpack has completed yet so it might take a little bit of time it just it just takes a while for the thing to freaking start working. I don't know why. Blame Webpack. I think that's the issue. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to wait for this to get done, and I'll be back.